My name is Andrea Di Stefano. I'm the game director on Gangs of Sherwood. As a game director, I establish the creative vision of the project. I make sure the game is as cool as possible. And last but not least, I make sure also that everyone on the team is happy while producing this project. I'm Michael Defrayant, artistic director on Gangs of Sherwood. I'm mainly in charge of the art direction, influences and references that were used to create the game world, environments and characters. When we started out on Gangs of Sherwood, we knew that we wanted to create a fast action game and the Robin Hood world and legend were a natural fit for the kind of game we wanted to make. When we started researching uh, the project, we didn't limit uh, the scope of our research to um, you know, the most famous contemporary movies or books. Uh, we really went back to the original tales, which are extremely old. And in them, we found interesting stories, situations, incredible characters that we could actually use into our story and our own take of the Robin Hood legend. We did a, a fair amount of research for the art direction. We were, of course, trying to establish the style and degree of realism, and we ultimately went for a distinct kind of atmosphere, quite, quite a dark one, but one that still realistically represents the various parts of the game. We also explored some specific aspects, such as the projection of shapes and a certain symbolism. When it comes to the characters of Gangs of Sherwood, uh, the four main characters are, let's say, classic characters that most people know from the Robin Hood legend, right? You have Robin Hood, of course, you have Maid Marian, Little John, and Friar Tuck. But we also went back to the original folklore and found like characters that some people may, may not know, like Guy of Gisborne or the Prioress of Kirklees, and we turned them into, well, most of the time, evil guys. Um, but the idea behind this is that we really wanted to provide a broader look at the whole Robin Hood lore. For the Alan Adale design, we wanted something different from the usual depiction of the character. We wanted to surprise players and create someone fairly ambiguous in terms of design, choice of colors, and expressions. So when it comes to the Robin Hood legend and world, uh, we're definitely doing our own take on the whole story, right? We're turning this into some kind of war story uh, where the um, main characters of the Robin Hood folklore are the leaders of a resistance against the evil sheriff of Nottingham. Um, on top of that, we place the technology of the world in a way more advanced state than the classic Robin Hood uh, technology, so medieval. Right. Here we really bring this idea of uh, science fantasy into the game. This technological progress is brought by the Lionheart, a magical stone found during the Crusades. This stone allows to alter metals and give them almost magical properties. It affects the military, it affects transportation, and in our case, most especially, it affects combat and the way in which characters interact with the enemies, what kind of powers they can trigger, and in general, it really supports the bombastic feel of the action. We did a lot of research when designing the stone. We drew on alchemy and uh, different ways you might imagine such a stone would look. For the environments, the game is divided into chapters, and we wanted variety from one chapter to the next, and, and even within a chapter. There are several iconic places in the game. Uh, for example, it starts in the village of Loxley, which is under siege. And there are other famous locations, of course, such as uh, Sherwood Forest and the town of Nottingham. We wanted to use the rather bleak aspect of the different regions in the game to highlight the war-torn atmosphere of our story and, and how pollution from technology affects the environment. There are several things I'm very proud of in Gangs of Sherwood. The game is very fun, both solo and as a group. We have a crazy narrator that has his puppets, Alana Dale, and then there's the final level of the game a giant flying fortress.